Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 22 is where we resume today's study. Going through the book of Proverbs, verse by verse. And you can study all of the Bible with me in this exact same way, verse by verse, Genesis through Revelation, using my audio Bible messages at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Four series going through the entire Bible, in-depth, verse by verse, Bible study. You choose one of the four series, and then you choose the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section, click and listen. And all you need to bring is your Bible to thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, verse 22, Proverbs 16. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. In other words, the more you understand the Bible, the better off you will be, especially if you apply it. The Bible is a wellspring of life, which is why a growing knowledge of God's word will refresh you and renew you on the inside, just like water refreshes our body on a hot, humid day. On the other hand, those who live in rebellion against the Word of God and are not following Scripture often will stumble through life, sweating and bouncing from one stressed out situation to another. People like that who ignore the Word of God, do not submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, are anything but refreshed. I've seen families, even professing Christian families, whose lives are totally messed up and they go from one bad to another because they are living contrary to the word of God and then bad things happen and they respond contrary to the word of God again uh, to the bad things that happen and they just dig themselves a deeper pit. 23, the heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. If your soul is filled with the word of God, it's going to be seen in the words that you use, which is why the Bible, which is why I should say Bible filled preachers and teachers make sense to those who really love the truth. Their popularity does not depend on big words. Their popularity does not depend on their ability to entertain or be cute or impress in some way. It is the clear, simple truth that they speak that causes spiritually healthy people, spiritually healthy Christians who are sold out to Jesus Christ to listen to them. That's what makes them attractive to those kind of godly people. And those are the only kind of people that a preacher and Bible teacher should be attract should be attracted by. If you're attracted by lukewarm preachers and they feel comfortable listening to you, that sells says an awful lot about you, and it's not good. Twenty four pleasant words are like in honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healeth health, I should say, to the bones. Let's read that again. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Now, if you want to feel good and get a boost of energy for your body, then eat something sweet. It'll do the trick. And if you want a boost of energy for your soul, then feed on the word of God. The Bible 
has the power to energize you to persevere when you don't think that you can go any further. The Word of God is a honeycomb. It's a shot of energy for your soul. It's a Hershey bar for your soul. It's a cup of coffee for your soul. A cup of coffee and a Hershey bar. 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, some people will say, listen to what your heart tells you. You ever hear anybody say that? Go with your heart. Go with your feelings. Some people say, get in touch with your feelings. I've even heard Christian, got to get in touch with your feelings. And that may sound good. And it may sound sophisticated and intellectual, but it is terrible advice because it is contrary to the word of God. I've even heard Christian so-called counselors say, you got to get in touch with the person inside of you. That's just another way of saying, get in touch with your feelings, get in touch with your emotions, get in touch with what your heart tells you. Why? Get in touch with that little guy inside? Why? Tell me where the Bible says that we are to do that. I had a pe preacher tell me one time, he was going through some personal problems. He, what a fool. He went to a psychologist. My goodness. Get in touch with the little boy inside of you where does the Bible say that? That's just a bunch of high-sounding trash. you got to get in touch with yourself. Again, why would I want to get in touch with myself? The Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. If I look in my, inside of myself for answers, you know what I'm going to get? I'm going to get lies. Myself will lie to me and tell me exactly what I want to hear, not what I need to hear. If you want to get in touch with someone, get in touch with the Holy Spirit who's inside of you and let him use the word of God to correct anything that needs to be corrected. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Your heart will tell you what seems right, but if it goes against the Bible and you follow it, you are headed for trouble. Always follow the word of God and follow your heart, yes, to the degree that it is consistent with scripture. 26. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. God is saying that hunger is a good motive for work. It is. I've been there many, many years ago before I was saved. I didn't have a job living in a town by myself. Didn't have a job. Uh, was no longer going to school, secular uh, school, college. I was on my own, no money, no job, and I was in trouble. Boy, I sure worked my tail off to get a job, and I got a job, and I worked like crazy to keep it, too, because hunger is a good motive to work. I got this bad habit of eating two or three square meals every day. The Bible says, to show you how intimately work and food are connected, God himself says, if a man will not work, neither let him eat. And we learn from this, that God created man to work. And God also created man to benefit from that work that he does. The reason socialism is so ungodly and it comes across as being so loving and compassionate and share everything. It's unbiblical. 
totally. The reason socialism and communism fails miserably wherever it is tried is because they remove too much of the reward for work, which is contrary to scripture to do something like that. Why work when so much of your money goes to people who do not work? It's not loving. That's not compassionate. That's heresy. It's, it's legalized stealing. 27. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. Well, this is talking about someone who digs up evil. The kind of person who digs up scandal. He hunts for anything that may be wrong. Or he, look, or he, he hunts for anything that may be wrong or even looks like it could possibly be wrong in order to embarrass someone. But one day that digger will himself be embarrassed because God Almighty hates that sort of thing. 28. A perverse man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. Beware of those who plant bad thoughts about others. Seeds of doubts, seeds of strife can poison a good relationship. Satan does that sort of thing all the time, which is why he is called the slanderer. The devil hates it when people like God, so he plants doubts about the Lord's character. So I can tell you this without any fear of contradiction. Anytime a person thinks, why doesn't God do this for me? Or, or why doesn't he allow this good thing to happen to me? Or why did he allow that to go wrong? Or if I'm his child, then why all of this bad that I'm experiencing? Those kind of thoughts did not come from the Holy Spirit. I'll guarantee you that. Any thoughts which in any way bring into question the goodness of God is either from our sin nature or from the devil. That is precisely what Satan did in the garden of Eden when he planted seeds of doubt about the character of God in the mind of Eve. The devil wanted to poison the good relationship that Adam and and Eve had with God. So what did he do? He suggested that God was not fair. And after Eve bought that lie, it was just a small step to sin and a ruined relationship with the Lord and a ruined life for all of us. Thank you very much. Measure the character of God by the word of God, not by your circumstances or by your feelings. 29, a violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him, leadeth him into the way that is not good. <clears throat> it is bad to sin yourself, but it's even more depraved to entice others to sin along with you. It is bad enough to delight in one's own sin. It is even worse to get a depraved satisfaction from the sins of others. 30. He shutteth his eyes to devise perverse things, moving his lips. He bringeth evil to pass. The shutting eyes and the moving or the pressing lips is talking about someone who is carefully calculating bad behavior. In other words, they work very hard at being bad. Everyone does wrong, but there are some who think about it and devise it and premeditate it and then work hard to carry it out. And anyone who hangs out with someone like that is just begging for trouble. You're inviting trouble into your life. You're better off being alone than being with someone like that because they're going to drag you down spiritually and it'll hurt you and it'll hurt those that you care about too. We'll stop right there. Study all the Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com and remember to be a part of this ministry, this proven ministry, has been proven to be faithful to the Word of God for 35 years. You can check it out. Never once did have I watered down God's Word. 
in 35 years of doing scripture verse by verse and always taught the whole counsel of God. If you would like to be a part of this ministry that you can trust to get out the word of God without compromise, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word because that'll sure help me to continue to do it. I need your prayers. And also, when you take a break from studying at the Bible, versebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also will make you a part of this ministry. And I'd appreciate it all. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.